in this next project, um, you know, uh, applying what we've learned about a race, we're going to build a word guessing game. And we need to create a bank of words that we can scramble and give the player a hint for those words. So a good structure to do that in a very small amount of code would be a multidimensional array. In this case, a 2D array with rows and columns, right? So the word to scramble and the hint to give to the player. We have some locals here. In this case, number of words will be the word bank count. That's the number of words in our word bank. Number of words to guess, and it's going to be five. And what we're, we're, you know, remember, here we're creating an array of fixed length or fixed size, right? Using new object. So it will only hold no more, no less than five integers, integer objects. We have some more variables to hold our random number and our scrambled text and score and guess and things like that. We'll display, you know, clear the console and display guess my word 1.0. You must guess num words to guess, right? We're not hard coding values. So five scrambled words. You get num guesses, in this case, three, right? Okay, so I broke this into, in this case, two different stages because the first thing we need to do is generate a random number and store it in this array. Well, actually five random numbers so we can pick five words randomly out of our bank of words, okay? But when we're generating random numbers, it's possible we could generate two or more numbers that are the same. Could we not? I mean, in real life, when you're rolling the dice, it may not be likely, but sometimes it happens that you get snake eyes twice, or you roll double threes twice, you know? However unlikely it is, logically, we need to code for that contingency. Or for that possibility. And so the first thing we have to do is not just generate five random numbers, but we have to go through the array and make sure that none of the random numbers we generate matches any of the other random numbers that we saved in the array. In other words, we have to make sure every single number is unique so that we don't have duplicate words from our word bank. Okay? So this portion is just going to be generating five random numbers and making sure we don't have duplicates and storing them in our array, this first section. The next section we'll go through, then using that array, once we're sure that they're all unique and we have five random numbers in the range of, you know, zero through 19, because we only have 20 rows in our word bank, then we'll use those random numbers to select, uh, select our random words and then we'll scramble them and, and we'll see if the player gets it right, okay? But the first part of this, we need to take care of generating those five unique random numbers. So to do so, right, have a while true loop, and we're gonna use our counter variable, and our counter variable starts out at zero, okay? While it's less than random words dot count. And remember, random words is an array of fixed length, right? Of fixed size, and how many elements does it hold? Five at this point. So we want to iterate. Ideally, we would iterate through this loop five times, but it could be more than five if we generate several numbers that are the same, okay? So um, there is more than one way to generate a random number in PowerShell, and I'd like to show you multiple ways of doing that. So here we're going to use random, a random object, to generate a random number, and we'll assign it to random. And then later I'm going to un I'm going to comment this out and uncomment this, and we'll look at using our old familiar get random method. It does the same thing behavior-wise, produces the same results, but I'm just trying to give you more colors for your palette when you paint with code. Okay, so random number equals, we're going to, we're going to display the random number because we want to monitor what's happening. And we have a Boolean here. And this is used with a do while loop and an inner for loop. Okay, so we have some nesting, two nested repetition structures here. And this is part of the process that we're going to use to repeat uh, generating the random number or to regenerate it if it happens to be a duplicate and match any of the numbers we had previously generated and stored in our array. So repeat as a Boolean starts out as false. We go into our do while loop. Okay, we're gonna loop again through every element 
and the random words are rare. Remember, it has five elements. And note this is a form of recursion. Remember back in the videos on functions, we said recursion? Or when you do something recursively, you have one method or function call another. Or many times you'll have the return value of one function fed in as a parameter or an argument to another function. And they call each other repetitively to solve a problem. Well, this is sort of a form of recursion because we're doing that here. We're going to repetitively keep uh, executing these loops, you know, the, the do while loop and the for loop until we have five unique numbers, no duplicates, okay? And how do we do that? So we generated our first random number through the loop, right? And then we're gonna go through every element in our random words count array, in random words array, right? Count five of the values five. And we're gonna compare. So if the random number is equal to the index subscript value of i, which you know i will be it'll count up 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, well we found a duplicate then. Okay? So hypothetically, say that we're on the third iteration in this loop, 0, 1, 2. And let's say that the random number we generated up here was a 5. And let's say that, that the you know the the value stored in you know in the third element, element the one that's indexed as two, let's say that that is also five. Well, then this would be true, right? The random number we generated is equal to the number that's stored in that position. So then what happens? Repeat is set to true. It was false up here. Now it's set to true. And we encounter the keyword break. Break causes us to break out of this for loop right here, okay? So we break out of this for loop. And what does that do that? Then we fall out to the while true loop. Well, repeat was set to true. And this is a logical not operator, right? It's the same thing as saying, you know, if while repeat is false. Well, is repeat false? No. Repeat is true. Why do we set it to true? Because the random number we generated matched one of the numbers stored inside of our array. And so, therefore, because we hit the keyword break, we fall out of the for loop. And because repeat is true and not false, see the little exclamation there? We also fall out of the do while loop. And then what happens? So then we go back to the top of our while loop. Okay, so there's three loops here. Loop one, loop two, the do while, and loop three, the for loop. Just to get a unique random number. But, but so because of the value of repeat and because of break, right? We fall out of four because of break. We fall out of do while because repeat is not false, repeat is true. We set it true here because why? It matched one of the numbers in our array. Then what happens? We cycle back up to the while loop. And what do we do? We generate another random number. Okay? And then we do the whole process over again. Repeat is reset to be false. And let's look for a duplicate. And if, if the next time through we don't find a duplicate, then this never happens, right? The if block here is never executed. If, if it doesn't match anything stored in the array, then we've generated a new, unique, random number value. And so repeat is never set to true. Repeat stays false, okay? So then what happens? We're just gonna assign it and store it in the array. Ooh, this number is unique. Say it was a 13 or a 17 or something. So we're gonna store it and in this case, in the position of counter, well, counter is keeping track of, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So whatever counter is on, we're going to store that value there. Okay. Advance counter, you know, postfix increment. And we're going to set repeat to true and break. This has the same effect. Behaviorally, break will exit us out of this for loop here. And setting repeat to true will exit us out of this while true loop here. And so then what happens? We iterate or go back to the top of the while true loop and do it all over again. Generate random numbers until what happens? Until we've generated five unique random numbers, right? Because counters getting postfix incremented here every time we successfully do and it's unique. And then after we have five unique numbers, then finally, 
this whole outer wall true loop is finished and we fall out of the loop there. And then we're just going to show our, our random values here, okay? So this portion, I'm going to run it a few times. So you, I think if you see the behavior, it'll, it'll make more sense, okay? So must guess five scramble words, you get three guesses per word. Now, do we have any duplicates here? Here's a five, a one, an 11, a six, a zero, a 12, okay? Let's run this. And now look, we have duplicates. 13 and 13. We have 12 and 12. Okay. There are lots of duplicates there. So, but by utilizing these processes, we've ended up with five unique numbers. Okay. Well, in other words, we, we got rid of our duplicates. Let's try that again. 13, 13 and 7 and 7 and 5 and 5. We would have had a lot of duplicates there. But we've eliminated the duplicates using this process. Let's try again. Okay. In this case, duplicate nines. But we've eliminated that by following this process. Okay. So that's the first part of this word scramble game that we needed to work out in code. Or that we needed to sort of paint out in code. The ability to create five not duplicated random numbers. And now we have that so we can move on to the next portion of the game. Now that was using a random object. I'm going to comment this line out and I'm going to uncomment this line. And we'll use the get random method with a minimum of one and a maximum of number of words minus one. Okay. Number of words is how many? Word bank count. So that's, that's what we want, right? We want to pick a word from 0 through 19. So there's 20, 20 rows here. I'm going to pick one of those, okay? So just to show you that it does the same thing, though. Look, I have duplicate tens, but I got rid of the duplicates. Duplicate thirteens, but I got rid of the duplicates, right? Duplicate twelves, but I got rid of them. So now I have five unique numerical values, okay? So uh, I'm just giving you different ways of doing it, right? Whether you use um, get ran random here <clears throat> or whether you use a random object. Okay, so let's... So we, we have our 2D structure to hold the word we want to scramble and the hint to the player have our array that we have you know a fixed length a fixed size here to hold our five uh, unique random numbers to choose our random words um, we have generated a random number you know for all 20 of those those elements these words here some random number between you know in this case we want 0 and 19 20 rows but remember it's indexed 0 to 19 we made sure that our array of five numbers is unique. So we have no duplicates. We've done that. And this is a line I added in just to show you that when you pass in the name of an array, okay, random words, in this case, that's our array of integers, and you don't use an index or subscript value. In other words, if I'm not ac accessing the first element or the second or the third, I just use the array name. It will return all the elements stored in the array, whether they be strings or numbers. So sometimes it's what you want. It's, it's a quick way to get at the values stored therein. Um, matter of fact, let me comment this out real quick, and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so if I were to run this, and what did I comment? Why? Okay, so so when I call this line here, 
All right, notice that these are all the integer values stored there. Random words array, and there's all the integer values, okay? So I just, I kind of wanted to show you that. All right, so now we need to, you know, once we have our five unique random numbers, we need to use them to pick our words and then scramble them. So we have another for loop here, okay? And this for loop, this is sort of the, the main loop of our game, all right? That's, that's the you know, main loop body of our game. So what are we gonna do? For the number of words to guess, that's five. We're going to, in this case, rand word is going to be random words x. Well, random words, remember that was our array. It's our array of five unique random numbers, right? So we're gonna get each of those unique numbers and we're gonna pass it to rand word. And then what does rand word do? We're gonna take our word bank, our 2D array, and we're gonna pull the word that we wanna scramble. And we're gonna store that in word. And we're gonna put the clue that we wanna to present to the, the user. We're gonna store that in clue, right? But whatever that random value is, this is the word we wanna scramble in column one. And this is the clue we want to give the player in column two. But remember, it's off by one, so it's indexed zero, one, and not one, two, okay? Now, this is an important method because I want to scramble, you know, th these are string values stored in this array up here, but I want to scramble them. And to do that, I need to shuffle the characters. So I'm going to call the method toCareArray to convert my string into an array of type character. Ultimately, a string is an array of type character, but it's a class of objects in PowerShell. So this function is important. It's a useful method when you want to manipulate individual characters inside of a string. All right, so we're basically changing the data type here to care array, and we're going to assign that to scramble. So scramble is no longer a normal string like word. Scramble is an array of characters. And if we display them one by one, it'll be that word but it's treated as individual characters, okay? So what are we gonna do? Well, we have another for loop and our word, okay, we can call the length method for the number of characters in the string. So however many characters are in that string, what do we wanna do? We're going to create yet another random number, right? So we'll pick one of those characters in that word, in that string. And then what are we gonna do? We're gonna store whatever's in the current position of that random number. Let's hypothetically say that it was a two. All right, we'll store that character in temp one. And then we're gonna get the character behind it and store that in temp two. And then what are we gonna do? We're going to take this and and the random minus one, and, and we're gonna store, so the character that was behind, we're gonna to move to the front, you know, in front of that character. And the character that was in front, we're gonna move backwards. This is sort of like a, a bubble sort, but basically we're just flipping the characters, taking one character, moving it behind the other, and taking that character that we stored in temp and then moving it in front of the other. And we're gonna keep looping through until we've done that with all the characters. That would effectively scramble our word. Would it not? Once we've shuffled all those characters around, hopefully making the word a bit less decipherable, a bit more cryptic or obfuscating its value. And then we'll say guessing for word, and remember X is zero, but to make it player friendly, we're adding a one. So guessing for word one, two, three, four, five. Clue, that's the clues here, right? That's the second column in our 2D array. And the scramble, that was what, you know, that's what we got done. That was our, our string, our word converted to a character array. And then we scrambled it all character by character for the number of characters that was in the string itself. So that would be our scrambled word, okay? And then now we've presented the information the player needs to make a choice. Now we need to get input and do some comparison, right? So we have another for loop. Well, A is less than number of guesses. Well, they get three, right? Why? Because that's what we coded up here on our local variable. 
to get three guesses, okay? So, in this case, read host returns a string, attempt what? It'll count one, two, three instead of zero, one, two, and we store it in guess. If guess equals the word, all right? If they can see through our obfuscation, our scramble, and if it matches the word, what's the word? That's that random, remember the first column? So one of these words here, and if what they type in matches it, then what are we gonna do? You did it, you guessed my word. My word was, give them some feedback, and then A, if I set A to num guesses to three, what happens? That's the exit condition for this for loop, right? So I'm gonna fall out of this for loop. I could also, if I wanted to, just use break. I could just erase this and replace it with the keyword break. You know, just giving you options. There's more than one way to skin that cat. I'm going to post fix increment score, adding one. And then I need to pause. And actually, we should catch this return value here. Um, I don't want that baseball to break a window. But OK, that's if they get it right, if they guess the word this logic, this block here would, would, would execute. But if they don't get it right, then this block would execute. This whole block here, right? And what are the, the possibilities? There, there's two. Either way, if they get here, that means they got it wrong. They guessed it wrong. But if A is less than the number of guesses, hey, sorry, you didn't guess the word, but you could try again. Otherwise, else, sorry, you did not guess my word. You were all out of guesses for this word. My word was, and we'll tell them what the word is. Same thing, we, we need to, you know, pause and wait for them to hit enter before they continue. And we need to catch that return value there. Okay, so does that make sense? All right, so I'm gonna pop it up here on our 2D array and let's run it and see what happens. Actually, I'm gonna clear the output here my previous friend. There we go. Okay. So guess my word 1.0 and here's the array and then guessing for word run. Clue taking the credit for someone else's work. Well here's our scramble converted to a character array, right? Remember we converted it to a character array using to care array that function, that method, and we scrambled the word. So we got plagiarism here. But this is what plagiarism looks like after we did our, our almost a bubble sort here. Flipping our characters around, okay? And if I if I type it in right, and if I guess the scramble, plagiarism. You did it, you guessed my word, my word was plagiarism. Press enter to continue. Okay? And in this case, guessing for word number two. Getting what you deserve. Alright, and that's that's karma, right? Of course, we can cheat. Because we can go up here. Getting what you deserve is karma. But you did it. You guessed my word. My word was karma. Press enter to continue. Okay, guessing for word three. Don't get mad. Get even. Hmm. What, what, what could that be? What could that be there? Do we want to cheat, maybe? Is it revenge? You did it, you guessed my word. My word was revenge, okay? And let's look at the next word. Um, fear of open spaces, that would be agoraphobia. Um, but what if I typed in claustrophobia, the fear of closed spaces? We'll just get it wrong one time. Sorry, you did not guess my word, attempt to. And then, Then I'll type in agoraphobia. You did it, you guessed my word, yay. Finally, word number five, deceptively misleading situation. And what do you, what do you call that? Entrapment. I did it, I guessed the word. Final score five, I, I guessed them all within the prescribed number of wrong guesses.